Zach Wilkes, a bar manager of Euphoria. He makes the best Sazerac in town, and it's almost Mardi Gras. And Sazerac is a very iconic American and New Orleans drink, so I'm going to ask him a couple questions about that. Now, tell me a little bit about this Sazerac. I think you make the best, if not only, one in town. I think I probably make the only one in town. And it's, um, like I said while I was making it, it's considered the first American cocktail, and it's just kind of an iconic drink for New Orleans and kind of an iconic drink for the uh, for the period. And it's uh, it's basically a little bit of absinthe, rye whiskey, some bitters, and simple syrup. Mm -hmm. I, I've read that the inventor was uh, an apothecary, a pharmacist, so I guess that kind of accounts for the absinthe. Most definitely. That and actually the bitters in it too. The, the, the inventor, uh, Antoine Pichard, is actually famous for Pichard's bitters, which is one of the most famous bitters that's still used in classic cocktail making today. Cool. Um, speaking of the specific liquors and bitters and, and flavors involved, um, I was asking a little bit earlier about the rye whiskey. It's, how is that a little bit different than bourbon whiskey? I think at the time, rye was a lot more available than the grain and sour mash, and I think that's why rye whiskey came about. And for me personally, the, the difference in flavors is you get a little bit more character and a little bit more depth of flavor in the drink. It, it's, uh, and, and plus, that's the first way that I had it. Right, it's, right. It's, it just kind of stays that way for me. So. Yeah, and the rye, the whole drink is very sort of botanical and, and well-rounded. Refreshing, how would you describe it? It's funny you say refreshing because it is just a glass of whiskey, basically. And a lot of people don't consider that refreshing, but, but it is very refreshing. And it's all about, cocktails like this, it's all about the balance of the ingredients. It, a little too much absence is going to ruin it. A little too much bitters is going to ruin it. So it's all about the uh, uh, balancing it, get, getting the perfect balance. Right. Now, I also wanted to ask about uh, the gin fizz that you're making. Sure, most definitely. That's, a, um, that's another New Orleans-inspired cocktail or, or its origins are in New Orleans, and that started off in the early 1800s as well. And like I said, we use an old Tom Jim in it, which is uh, it's a more flavorful, more botanical, bitier gin. And then I put a little simple syrup in mine, which isn't original, but I just like a little bit of sweetness. Uh, the fresh squeezed lemon juice really makes it refreshing. And then it's uh, uh, the egg white. And when you shake the egg white into it, it gives it a real silky, uh, soft texture to it. I'm with Matt Shane, the Jazz Kitchen superstar bartender. Right. And he's going to tell me uh, just a few things about some of their Mardi Gras cocktails that they make here. And this one is the famous or infamous, depending on how, you, how your experience has been, Hurricane. So uh, tell me a little bit about how you make it, Matt, because I know everybody, and you were saying, a lot of recipes are, are different. That's right. A lot of times people put all different types of fruit juices and other types of uh, liquor besides rum in it. Uh, but here we, we stick to the basic standard. We do light and dark rum. We do a little bit of grenadine, orange juice, and then fresh lime juice. Top it off with a little garnish of the lime, and then a lot of times we'll put a cherry on as well. You were telling me sometimes you do like color gradations with the way that you mix it. Well, the fancier bartenders can put the grenadine at the bottom as they're sticking their stir stick in there, sort of swizzle it up a little bit, and sort of make it to what they call the hurricane look. So another drink that I know has been gaining a lot of popularity lately is the caipirinha, mm -hmm. which is actually Brazilian. It's not of New Orleans origin, but you know they do the carnaval over there, and so carnaval and Mardi Gras are kind of similar, so that's sort of a pertinent drink. So tell me a little bit about that drink. Well, to start with, it's made with cassacha, which is fermented sugar cane that is then distilled. So it actually sort of has a sort of sour taste to it. It's a little pungent. Um, it's a very full body, so it's a little thicker than your, than your average rub. Mm -hmm. um, and then what you do is you take fresh lime. I use about a whole lime uh, for, for caipirinha. Oh, wow. And I squeeze, you know, chop it up, you squeeze them all in there. Um, you take a muddle, and you actually muddle it a little bit. Then you add a little sugar, or sugar water is what we use here, and a little bit of fresh, uh, a little bit of Rosa's lime juice. Top it off with some ice, and it's a very sweet, refreshing drink. I'm here with Ben Sears at uh, Nikki Blaine's Cocktail Lounge, and this is sort of the new, into the new millennium uh, way of celebrating Mardi Gras. It's not necessarily a traditional uh, New Orleans beverage, but it's the Cajun Martini, which obviously has application for the holiday. And I'm going to let Ben take it away and tell you a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was invented by David McVeigh, which is our bar manager, uh, which we're going to use in New Orleans uh, vodka, which is a mandarin pepper vodka by Absolute. With, uh, 
crushed pepper, which uh, gives that little spice plus your Tabasco sauce. Shake it up and use a two ounce pour on it and then pretty much top it off with uh, jalapeno olives.